Deputy Catherine Connolly, Fahey Nomad. I mean, Margaret the Cahirly, August Falchum, Revan Jesh, Morris Ganok, Porchig Lockus, the G Sporduck Show, August Tuggan on Billa Show, August Isbilla. Ma agus is bile jarfake, ag tagan che tarish alon turuskala, turuskala ke, agus tarish alon rodi nakraukyart, agus ta an amerka ama katche rev an nalasia sha a kar konkrete os kor nadala las jitten vile sha, agus ta me kontu se kerle sha proche sha new le Lesh an turiskal on ir vrehev Charlton agus tanyart le ra ege o hiv nungardi je rodi maha agus rodi nakwil koma sheno ko jarfak aki du spara tasoi me lesh an mila e hein agus rahi me chimpel le char le Charlton agus chuk me arash kuji an bila. Uh, Minister, I welcome the opportunity, as always, to take part, and that's what democracy is: taking part and going through legislation. And this bill has come on the back, and it's a very welcome bill. And its proposed restructuring is very good, but it has come on the back of quite a number of reports, which I'm going to go into as quickly as I can. And I've Charlton's report opened in front of me here, and he was asked uh, back in 17, it was set up in 17, he's still sitting by the way, but he produced an interim report in 18. So I'm going to come back to that. The bill itself is a practical one as far as I can see, and Galway is getting its own division and has its own division, which I understand was rolled out on a pilot project. Incidentally, it would be helpful to know what was the result of the pilot project? Galway was just one of the areas so that we know was there positive or um, questionable things that needed to be changed or not changed. I don't know, but it would be helpful if we had it. So we're going to have um, four Garda regions and 19 divisions covering community engagement, including roads and community policing, crime, performance assurance and business services. Now, it's based on a number of things, as I've said, and let me just take you through quickly through so we remind ourselves of the context uh, where this reform has come from and just really echoing some of the th issues raised by Deputy McGuinness. So we look at Charlton. The tribunal has been about calling the police force to account. This is page 292. The Morris Tribunal, so this tribunal, the Charlton, about holding the guards to account. The Morris Tribunal was about the same thing. But just remind you that the Morris Tribunal was Donegal and the foolish mistake was made to think that the behaviour was just part of Donegal and not any other county. And that Morris Tribunal has cost 70 million plus. And then we had the commission of investigation by De uh, Justice Kevin O'Higgins. And when I was first elected back in February 16, shortly after that, I remember reading that report in detail. And I couldn't believe that I had 30 minutes in the doll to go through it. And I used those 30 minutes and I could not believe. And that was a very moderate report, let me say, by Justice Higgins. And the honesty of a Sergeant McCabe jumped off the page. It, it, we also had a whole load of other reports, uh, Earl O'Neill, Judge Earl O'Neill, Sean Gearden, Senior Counsel, and they're only some of the reports that have led in to this reform. I'll jump forward to just first of all to be positive and again it's something that jumps through I have the greatest respect for the guards on the ground I believe that we should have more guards and they should be more visible although the police and authority draws our attention to that and says it's really important that they're visible but that ignores the good work that's done behind the scenes and the under resourcing of the special units in relation to cyber crime and sexual abuse and so on so in pushing the visibility of the guards I'm acutely aware of the work that's done behind the scenes, under-resourced, under-praised uh, and not visible. So we look at Charlton. Our police force is a resource of brilliant men and women, a resource of brilliant men and women. Indeed, that's echoed in the policing plan that ordinary guards are the greatest resource. How dispiriting it must be then for them that all of what is detailed in this report happened. They are crying out for leadership. Now, this is 2018, not too long ago, just over three years ago. 
Regrettably, the tribunal has sat through a year of evidence and read thousands of documents and as a result has come to the conclusion that Angarda Siakana is losing its character as a disciplined force. And this is from a very, what I would call, um, not a judge given to over-exaggeration. Furthermore, it would be foolish to imagine that the problems were isolated to the Cavan Monaghan division. It's a point I've repeatedly made and we should have learned from the Morris Tribunal in Donegal. Central to the, in, central to the issues highlighted is a mentality problem. Where a problem occurs, strongly self-identifying organisations have a self-protective tendency. That regrettably also de describes Angarda Siakana. It is beyond a pity that it took an independent, that it took independent inquiries to identify obvious problems with what Morris McCabe was reporting. To ask the right question, he quotes Chekhov, is to go far in answering it, and so on. A cultural shift is required in respect of the truth that's needed. And I'm going to just quickly turn over to some of the obligations of Gardaí. And let me preface those comments by saying they apply to all of us, really. Me as a TD, to this institution of the Dáil, and many other institutions. But in this case, under the prism here, or under the spotlight, are the obligations of the Gardaí Síochána. And can you imagine that we needed a Charlton tribunal at great cost, but minor cost compared to the Morris Tribunal. Let me tell you what it says, the obligations of the Gardaí, and I've highlighted here all seven. The obligation of the Gardaí is to take pride in their work and in their uniform, and then this a, a more detail of that. The second one is to be honest. That applies to all of us, of course. The third is to be visible. The fourth one is to be polite. We needed a, a Charlton Tribunal to tell us this now for the guards. The fifth obligation is to serve the people of Ireland. To serve, just like TDs are supposed to serve, including myself. The sixth obligation on the Gardaí is the organisation as the whole. The organisation must treat their obligation to the public as superior to any false sense that individual policemen and police women should stick up for each other. The seventh obligation is self-analysis. And a repeated theme here is the failure by the guards to have self-analysis. Again, we can all put ourselves under that spotlight. The seventh obligation, self-analysis. It should not be necessary to have a Morris Tribunal for six years, nor to have a O'Higgins Commission for a year and a half, nor a Disclosures Tribunal, now reporting after over a year and a half been set up and so on, it shouldn't be necessary. What has been missing in the past is the command structure of the Garda Siakana to account for itself. He says, public relations speak as a substitute for plain speaking is an affront to the duty of our police force to be accountable. The correct approach for an organization is to enable those who are expert on a subject to speak on its behalf. Uncovering the truth. In relation to the matters at issues in these reports, it has been a dreadful struggle to attempt to uncover what may have gone on behind closed doors. That should not happen. A court or a tribunal or other investigative body appointed on behalf of the people is the place where public servants are obliged to the, get to the truth and not to any group adhesion and so on. What has been unnerving about more than 100 days of hearings in this tribunal is that a person who stood up for better standards in our National Police Force, Sergeant Morris McCabe, and who exemplified hard work in his own calling, was repulsively, repulsively denigrated for being no more than a good citizen and a police officer. The question has to be asked as to why, what is best, what demands hard work, is not the calling of every single person who takes on the job of services to Ireland. Worse still is the question of how it is that decent people of whom Morris McCabe emerges as a paradigm are so shamefully treated when rightly they demand that we do better. So I'll put Charlton aside, but it's important to give the context to the reform before us. 
And then I look at the policing authority and on, in addition to those reports that I've mentioned, we've had the setting up of various um, oversight bodies, the police and authority, the guard, guardra, the Garda inspectorate and the ombudsman. And on top of that, then we've had the various reports, policing for the future, uh, the a plan arising under that, the guard operating plan, a policing service for our future and so on. I realise that there has been some discontent from the Garda Representative Association and the Garda Sergeants and Inspectors. So if the Minister was in a position to update us on their concerns and whether they have been put to bed or not, that would also be very helpful. In relation to um, the police and authority, again, I have consistently read all of the police and authority reports in relation to the policing behaviour during COVID, and overwhelmingly, it has been wholesome in its praise of the Gardaí on the ground in relation to the COVID. We have a specific one here from the police and authority just generally on policing performance, July 21. And again, Minister, it praises and it's balanced report and it praises the guards uh, for when they deserve praise. However, and they highlight actually the conditions under which guards work and indeed what jumped out at me was the growing evidence of driving under the influence of drugs has been an increasingly common feature of contemporary life. So guards work in a very difficult environment. They deserve our support and our respect. But to get that, there has to be good management that inspires trust so that we can trust them. And I, amongst many people, have called for more and more guards on the streets in Galway to be, walk through the people, cycle. They were particularly absent when the government gave the thumbs up to drinking on our streets in Galway. And so we gave a message out that ignored all the policies, our Healthy Cities policies, our Barcelona Declaration, that committed to universal access for all our residents. Instead of that, the government gave a message, go out and drink, said to the businesses, and I fully support businesses, extend onto the pathways, but the Barcelona Declaration was thrown to the side. So again, the Barcelona Declaration was signed almost 20 years ago by Galway, committing Galway City to universal access so we would stop the discrimination between able and people who are not so able, to stop this arbitrary discrimination thrown to the wind. We have bylaws that say you can't drink on the street, had to be ignored by the guards because the policy from the government was go out and drink and be merry. And while I love a drink and I love to be merry outside of the doll, it has to be balanced with other people's rights. So the guards were left in a very awkward position in Galway in relation to how they were going to implement the bylaws and implement the various regulations that were coming from government. And that has left us in a quandary in Galway uh, with community policing in the sense that we want a lot more, but we want a balancing of rights between our citizens and our residents who we encourage to live in the city and yet we give free reign on the other hand which takes away the peaceful and quiet enjoyment of residents lives and that is a huge challenge in Galway City and I'm sure it's repeated in the other cities. In relation to this police and authority assessment report is an excellent document and it talks about the visibility of the police being very important but as I said it's also quite nuanced in saying the other work that's going on behind the scenes that is uh, not, um, not visible. It points out three major um, what will I say, three major gaps or three major issues. Finance, ICT and human resources. Considerable progress has been made in respect of ICT and a new executive director of finance has recently taken up the job. However, significant work remains to be done in all three areas. And it goes on later to tell us the consequence of that means that It also, sorry, it's the absence of a strate strategic workplace plan and a long-standing vacancy for learning and development director. So it leaves then the management without a clear sense of direction, prioritisation and planning. 
and this is specifically spelt out. Also, information that they've asked for for a repeated time hasn't been forthcoming from the guards, notwithstanding the commitment to reform. The authority as part of its statutory functions is required under a various section to provide advice to the Minister of Justice before each financial year with regard to the resources that are likely to be required. Since the establishment of the authority, this function has been largely frustrated and action against it undermined by a lack of sufficient financial information and insight from the Garda Shikana. That's page 16 of the Policing Authority Assessment of Policing Report. It tells us that the get approximately two billion annually covers current and capital expenditure. And at present, notwithstanding that amount of money, the organization does not have the ability to cost the policing plan or the projects within it. This lack of overall budgetary planning results in resources not being in place when they are needed. While it is difficult to identify the projects or targets that are most directly impacted by this or the extent which they are, the reliance on HR, IT, training and estates means that the lack of proper financial costing and planning presents ongoing challenges and delays and so on. I've skipped through uh, uh, in the uh, in, uh, interest of brevity, but it's all laid out here in black and white. And it tells us the authority will continue to support and challenge the commissioner and a senior management team to enhance its strategic financial planning capacity. So in conclusion, I welcome, I welcome uh, the reform. I'm sure it may present problems on the ground. It has, has been drawn to our attention by the two organisations that I've already mentioned. I welcome the em emphasis on community policing, but I'd like to know if the concerns have or will be addressed, how they will be addressed. And I would like also to come back to the essence of what the Gardaí are. They're there to protect us and we must appreciate that. But in doing that, there must be proper training, proper ability to analyse where they're going wrong and put their hands up. That didn't happen in the recent debacle doesn't capture it of the cancelled calls. And I understand that investigation is still ongoing. The police and authority has been critical in relation to the delay in alerting to them, the cancellation of very serious calls, including calls from victims of domestic violence. I understand now an independent person has been appointed to look into it. However, again, you would have thought with a new direction and a new commitment that all of that would have been proactive, that it wouldn't have taken the police and authority to drag it out as to what happened and the nature of it, nor would you think, should you think that the guards should be minimising what happened rather than putting their hands up front. Again, I don't wish to preach. I think it applies to all of us in our lives to learn. But the focus tonight is on the Garda Shia Kona. Finally, the CSO, um, um, in addition to the cancel calls, which is ongoing, and I'm sure we'll get a chance to come back to it, the uh, crime statistics are published by the CSO still under caveat. And that's going on for quite some time. As I understand it now, it's going on since 2004. So it, it would be helpful if we knew some, at what stage that caveat will be lifted. Now, I don't want an answer that the CSO are independent. What I'd like to know from the Minister for Justice is what is the, the um, information from the Gardaí as to when they will be ready to give fulsome information to the Central Statistic Office so that the caveat can be removed. When will we have the strategic workplace plan? Because at the moment there seems to be a complete disconnect between that and, and the, the need for it and the consequences on the ground. So,